Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by tbradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. A general reminder for those who do not know, MIC is having a one-year anniversary event where Bao is going to be trading live in front of our members. It's coming up August 17th. Mark your calendars. As an added benefit for our members, the event is 100% and exclusively free for annual and lifetime members. While lifetime, on top of that, get extra coaching before the event and guaranteed front row seating. While most charge for these events, we show our support by making it, again, free for annual and lifetime members. If you are interested in signing up for this event, DM TBradley90 in MIC Slack chat and or email myself at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Now, we have a very special video for you guys this week as I do week four of my new member orientation webinar every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this week, specifically, Bao comes on and kind of just writes a bunch of texts on what you know his process is, what he does daily, what his routine is, and it's a really good look into what it takes to be a trader in all aspects of knowledge. So let's dive right in. And while today is just a preview of the full-length video, if you want to watch the full-length or any of our exclusive content, then become an MIC member. All right, guys, we're recording. This is uh, this is week four of the Q&A, just open and free talk. Um, the webinar just finished, and let's uh, let's get into some free talking questions. Like, who's got any questions today for anything, whether it's, you know, what ran today, whether it's hard stops, whether it's trading, do you guys have any questions about anything maybe we didn't talk about yet or you need? Um, clarification on does anybody want to talk about something specific or I can just go into some cool examples on stuff you guys can hear me okay right like I'm just making sure everybody can hear me someone post down at the new member channel that you guys can hear me Armando what's up buddy oh how you doing man we've been talking a lot lately how you doing man are things good are things good <laughs> we talked a lot in PMs, man. I've seen your journey, man. You're uh, you've been here for a while. Oh, sick, dude! Thanks for tuning in at work, man. Don't don't get in trouble. <laughs> don't get in trouble, there, partner. All right, somebody's got to have some questions, or I'm just gonna start talking about some random stuff. Who traded good today? Who traded bad? Let's talk about why. Let's talk about what can help you. Let's talk some stuff. Hit me with some questiones. Man, DMPI got slaughtered today, jeez. Um, Tosh, where do you post recorded Q&A? Don't see them in the library. Uh, we post to, uh, we, S. Jim, what's up buddy? We post to the, um, the YouTube and we do post in the library. We just literally posted, um, I had a hard time because I was traveling, but I did just post episode three. Um, Alex may or may not have posted the link yet, but that'll be up um, very shortly. And then today, right after buddy, I will upload uh, today's session and week four. So that'll be coming definitely. Yeah, stay tuned for that, man. But we post, we, I try to get them out as quick as possible every week, man, definitely. Uh, Oleg, missed the bounce on DMPI. Yeah, man, you know, the bounce in the morning, like when I was warning, I was like, man, this is pure front side, you know, pumpers were all over it. It was the only thing running today. It had like 5 million volume in the morning. Um, I wish I could post a chart on here. Um, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to make it so I can start posting charts on here and talking about it going, in, going into it, but I can't right now. But yeah, DMPI, man, was a front side long. And then it was a total, total death line and backside short that faded off all day. It was a nice one. Uh, can we talk about establishing a process, your process, getting parking tickets all day long? Holy shit, bro. Dude, they really hit UPS trucks. Are you kidding me? Uh, this is an asshole. That sucks. Dude, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, hopefully the company pays for it. <laughs> All right. So when it comes to a process, guys, we, we preach and we talk about process a lot. Everybody's process is going to be different, but within its difference, there is a lot of similarities. You know, um, Val likes to talk about how he has a ritual every day of like, um, it's kind of funny, but he, you know, he's very open about it and it helps him. You know, he's got to get a certain amount of sleep. He wakes up, I think it's, God, Val, what, Val can confirm this, but it's like 4.30 our time. So me and Val live in California, right? Which is like um, 7.15 or 7.30 for um, 
you know, Eastern Standard Time, and you wake up and do your things, man. I like to brush my teeth every morning. I cannot start the day unless I brush my teeth. I just feel disgusting. So, <laughs> holy shit, bro. Uh, my, mine's 445, bro. You beat me. So, Bowser alarm is 408 our time, guys. That is insanely early. So, 708 Eastern Standard Time. We got to get some sleep on the West Coast. But you wake up, you do your ritual. I know Bow takes a big old deuce. I brush my teeth. Um, if I have time to shower, then I shower. And then the first things first is I like to do just like a five minute or 10 minute run. So I'll take my dog outside, man, anything to clear my head. I think they said like, if you do a run in the morning, you have, <laughs> yeah, man. I love it. Val's posting his, uh, his process right now. I love it, man. You got to do what works for you, man. Your body is going to, you can train your body to do it every single day. And then it's going to just become repetition like your training should be. So I'll break mine down, man. I wake up, I brush my teeth literally first thing. I, I have to, I go for a run outside and then I'm instantaneously while I'm outside or running or walking my dog and getting fresh air to jumpstart my brain a little bit more. I am contacting Cobra. I'm contacting my boy, Chris at Cobra. Shout out, Chris. And I'm saying, Chris, I like tickers. I just read the watch list in MIC chat. I've seen the main trading chat. I hit up Chris and I go, Chris, um, what do you have of this? What do you have of this? What do you have of this? Let me take this, this, this. I get all my locates latest by 8 Eastern Standard Time. That's 5 my time. And I'm making sure that I'm ready for anything. And within that, I have already scan through criteria. I have already seen floats of everything. I have already seen short float percentage. I have read the catalyst, the news, um, once I get my locates, and then I am placing fantasy orders on anything. And while I'm a short seller, I like to hit pure backside. So if it's already in backside, I have my specialty um, fantasy orders, my fishing, quote unquote, fishing orders out there uh, ready to hit. If it is not in backside, then I am waiting for that intraday or end of day for a fade. I have my locates already paid, already reserved, and I will hit those when the time is right. Again, it's anticipation versus confirmation. But I am doing all the necessary information every single day like, like a broken record. It's very simple. Um, once you guys get a process going, that is your process. And then you fit rules into your process. So Alex's rule that is completely his process, is he does not trade after 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If he does, he's breaking his rules. If he sticks to this every day, he is insanely, extraordinarily consistent and profitable. And then Bao has his set of rules, and I have mine, and then you have his, and I'm sure Oleg has his. So it's things like that. But uh, <laughs> let's go through these real quick. I want to see. Uh, so Bao, his alarm is 4.08. Then he checks the scanners within an MIC chat room. I do the exact same. Then he checks for locates, brush teeth, do bowels. Um, he'll be at his trading desk by 4.45 a.m. and go through low hangers and new places to see what he likes to locate. Next, uh, Cobra has a lot of free locates. They do. I, I can definitely recommend this, guys. We'll save a lot of money. If you go to Cobra, you're, gonna, you're going to say, as an MIC member, you're going to save like 25% on commissions off the tally. So... If you guys trade a lot or scalp a lot, that is a ton of money by the end of the year. Um, it's I, I did not hesitate when when Cobra introduced that deal. Uh, so he calls Cobra to you know call Cobra to open an account and mention that you're MIC and get these discounts, guys. Seriously, RLGY, I screwed up today. I spoke about this on IG Live. You should watch to hear it uh, because I lost yesterday. I had PTSD on CHMA and. RLGY today. Yeah, guys, if you saw CHMA yesterday, that teleport candle in the immediate open, if you are not using hard stops, which we'll talk about in a second, you are dead. You are dead. So you need to have risk in check at all times. Um, so up until the open, I'm researching new plays and low hangers for lines, areas of interest, and filings to see what edge he can find on each play. I love this. So guys, anybody who's looking for a process, screenshot this right here about is giving his entire strategy of what he does each morning. Then he narrows down the list of the top three. This is key. Bao loves the top three and four plays. Pays attention to the float. It's very important. Watch the trading fish videos. You'll understand why. Uh, all of our, all these questions are definitely in the videos. He wakes up early to research plays as well as locating hard to borrow stocks to short. So, you know, it's look guys, trading is not easy, but it is very simple. You just have to learn the foundation. 
you have to develop a set of rules after back testing what works for you and then you have to do what works each day you know i get a lot of traders man they pm me every day and they're like dude talk to me 500 a day i made 700 today and then the next day they lose 1500 and i'm like bro like are you sticking to your process like what made you lose 1500 versus your max loss on the day of 500 um, and he goes, oh, I just revenge trade and I kept going in and in and in and I go, did you break process? It's a simple yes or no question. Did you break process every single time? It's a yes. You're dead. You're dead. You're dead. Trading is about showing up every single day, putting the cogs, the gears in motion. You know, the Swiss watch only works because each cog works every single day the same way, right? That's how a trader's journey should be. You wake up, you do what works and you avoid everything that does not work. And the minute you delve into what doesn't work, you're gonna fucking lose. You're going to lose. It's repetition, repetition, repetition. Um, oh, Val's got more. So he plans all his trades. Trades are planned before he clicks a button. I'm the same way. We've got fantasy. I learned this from Val over the years. We're doing fantasy orders. If backside is in, guys, or we look at the daily chart or the daily levels, that is where we're getting into a stock. He knows the lines, he knows the area of interest, and he has a plan to know where to add what, or reduce or exit completely or take gains and where to take losses if he has to or stop out. Um, you, but the key is, and I agree with this, the key is focusing on one to three. I can only do up to four stocks comfortably because I because they're all in one screen. So that's my process. If I have a fifth stock, my brain is just all over the place. I can do it, but again, if you want to focus on like one to three, maybe a fourth, and uh, have a plan, guys. Have a plan. Have exact levels where you want to add, reduce, or bail on your position, and then put fantasy covers in if you do like what I do. Um, so he places fantasy orders on all plays he likes, but he focuses on the top three. Then he ranks them. So he can size into the best and forget the rest, as you know, kind of Alex says, um, or go very small because he's willing to risk maybe you know um, a couple hundred bucks or five hundred bucks on the scalp, which you know that might be it's all relative, right? So if Val loses five hundred dollars, that's nothing to him, you know. But a new trader who comes in who's got a two thousand dollar account, you can't just throw bullets everywhere. You've got to really plan and build an account uh because when the stock gets there you already know your plan see that's the whole key guys when you do all these pre-planned notions pre-market there's no surprises and you cannot wing it you know oh <laughs> see i just said that before i even saw that you don't want to wing it i never wing a trade man i'm waiting for backside if backside's not in i wait for the confirmation this is why i i just i used to wing it for years and i would tread water and you, you know, you make a little money, you lose a little money, you make, you lose, you make, you lose. And who wants to do that? You don't want to tread water and bleed out and that'll just burn the candle out. So, you know, have a plan in place and never wing it. Um, every, try, every time Bao tries to nail something that moves, he'll screw them all up. I will too. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't? bao has been doing this 16 years and that still doesn't usually work. I've been doing this for six years and Alex has been doing this for six years and it doesn't work. You can't wing it. Um, nailing one play is better than screwing up five. I cannot agree more, guys. Um, I swear to God, I would rather, this is uh, kind of like a quote I put in place recently, I would rather hit much harder two to three times a week on an eight plus setup than try to make a little bit each and every single day while risking mental capital. See, mental capital is everything and it's as important as trading capital because like I said, if you are the type of trader who's finding consistency right now, but in little bits and you're winning today, but you're losing tomorrow, you're winning the next day, then losing the next day, and you're, you know, you're one step forward, a step back, or you're one step forward, and two steps back, guys, that is called treading water. You will burn the fuck out like a candle over time and you will eventually go oh trading's not for me you know i can't do this when realistically maybe you just needed one little little tweak that you can get on a call with me or any of our moderators daily which we do daily calls and we can help you identify why that's happening maybe you're sizing too much maybe you're not using hard stops which is unbelievably important maybe you just need a little bit of tweak in your process each morning it's sometimes the littlest thing can change the trajectory of your entire career, but preserving your mental capital is as important as, as preserving your trading capital. Um, yep, when starting out, paper trade to learn the mechanics. Yes, 
I, anybody who's, you know, a month in and forcing real money, guys, that's crazy. That's fucking crazy. It, you know, a, a lawyer does not become a lawyer unless he went to law school, right? Or like a doctor with medical school. You need to practice on fake money first. I mean, if you've got a big bankroll and you're like, you know, gung ho, then it, at least use hard stops and make sure that your risk management is in check. But I never, never recommend that a trader um, starts off with real capital because you don't understand how stocks move yet, guys. You don't know what front side is. You don't know what lines are, fantasy orders. You don't know what backside is, a red to green move. Um, all these things, you don't know that longs, you know, can get caught in an offering. Things like this that maybe you might see if you back test for at least a couple weeks or, or a couple months if you really need to. Um, uh, yeah, when you find consistency, you can increase size, absolutely. Uh, but don't size until you are consistent. See, that's the key. And then when you do size, guys, you know, it's not about going in double or triple your position. You know, if you're using a max size right now as a new trader, 500 shares, guys, I don't want you the next day after a week of consistency to go, hey, and now I can do a thousand shares. That's ridiculous. You should go to 500 to maybe 600 to maybe 700 to maybe 800. You know what I mean? To like week after week, like you need to increment your size slowly to the point of you almost don't even notice it. You're just so consistent that this little bit keeps adding up more and more. I think this is how they do it at prop firms, as uh, Val once said. But um, increment, you know, 10, 20% when you're ready, but already consistent. Um, I'll get to these guys' questions. Hold on one second. I just, I want to go over what Val is saying because it is truly, truly revolutionary information right now. I mean, for any new trader coming in, guys, this is, this is you got to screenshot all this stuff. Um, you know, Val's like, do your homework, classwork by watching videos and then observing. You don't want to gamble. So the best way to start, guys, is to, if you're new to trading today, you know, get a DOS simulator account, pay a hundred bucks a month, uh, whatever it is, 100, 150 bucks a month. Um, or sometimes there's free simulators out there, think or swim, whatever it is. But if you want a professional platform to trade on, DOS, and watch our videos simultaneously while paper trading each day, you know, reading chat, you know, reading all the commentary, and then and find a tab, yes. Find a tab partner. Have a tab partner from day one. You do not have to do this alone. Have someone hold you accountable. Bao and Alex do this. When Alex is out of town, Bao sometimes goes a little reckless in his trading and vice versa. So it's good to always have somebody to watch your back. Um, it is an uh, irrit irritative. Is that what you mean about? Is an irritated process? Of me? Uh, oh, irritative. Uh, back and forth to refine your process. Um, start with paper trading. Find um, comfortability. Then go live trading with 100 shares uh, to learn the mental and live trading aspect. Yes, man. I'm telling you, people or you know, people say, oh, paper trading is not cool, blah, blah, blah. Dude, what, what, what's cooler, paper trading or losing a ton of money? <laughs> paper trading until you're ready. So the intuitive, uh, am I saying that right? I've never seen this. <laughs> AKA back and forth process to find consistency because you're still learning the strategies. When starting out, just observe and watch. This is key. Um, see what others are doing. And like I said, you know, go to chart recaps and fills. Um, go to after hours, start networking and find a trader that links up with you, links up with your play style and make them your partner in crime. Uh, DOS does have a, um, oh, DOS has free paper trading account for 30, yeah, that's it, for 30 days. I didn't know that. So guys, you have all the resources. You just got to utilize them. Then after 30 days, you go live with 100 shares to feel real trading, get the emotions in check, you know, feel what it's like to go fishing, so to speak, and because fills are not instant in mental aspects. So that's the, that's the only thing that sucks about paper trading is the fills, you could fill 10,000 shares in a matter of seconds because, or instantaneously, because it's not real money. You know, these, market, these, these orders are not hitting the market. So, you know, that's gonna change when you go to real money. So you start slow and see how that fits, even if you do have a big bank account to, um, to feel it out because you guys are not going to be able to just fill 20,000 shares in a liquid stock like that. You know, you've got to feel it out. Um, paper trading is like practicing before you go to the NFL Sunday. I love it. Even NFL guys practice all week before the big, the real big game. I love this. I love this. Growing up, um, one of my parents' family friends, Chris Chandler, who was uh, the quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons and many other teams, but I grew up seeing him. He was kind of like an uncle of mine. They call him Crystal Chandelier sometimes when he gets sacked. I felt bad for him. But uh, 
dude, I mean, his life was football. If they were not at a game, they were practicing every single day. So again, you know, that's trading guys. It's like, you have to back test every single freaking day. If you want, look, if there's no coincidence that any one of our members like James Freelander or uh, Dave Vaughn or Tom Diesel or um, Joe Kelly or any of our guys who are consistent that had inconsistency before MIC, what they did was they watched every single video three times over in our library. Guys, I'm not kidding you. They watch every single Bow Daily Recap three or four times. They're at night, every night. They're screenshotting their charts. They're setting up lines. They're going back and reading the commentary. You will get out of trading what you put in, and I can promise you that. When I first started, well, I think it's like six years ago. I don't know the exact date. We'll say five or six. Um, I studied 14 hours a day, man. I quit jobs. I had saved up money. I like neglected a girlfriend at one point. Like, dude, it was bad. But in through my obsession, you know, the fruits of the labor paid off, right? But I studied 14 hours a day, man. I obsessed. I did every, I read every single tweet I could find <laughs> back then before MIC or even I was talking about personally, man. I read every single tweet he ever did over and over. I created templates, screenshots, everything, guys. So it takes you know, it takes a lot, but that's why MIC is created nowadays and we have a curriculum and a formula for you guys to follow. And so much of the guesswork and learning curve is you don't, we do it for you. We did it for you, you know, learn from our past trial and errors. Um, when you're not trading well, bench yourself back to practice field, just like pro sports athletes. I love this. You know, what I like to do is if I'm in a rut, you know, it hasn't happened in a while, but if I'm on a cold streak, guys, I take a couple days off and you know what I do? I mentally pay for trade. So I'm not paper trading on a system, but I'm in my mind, I'm taking a couple days off and I'm just mentally, you know, trading in my head. And I'm just like, okay, I, I, I'm going to put myself in purgatory, you know, or size extraordinarily down. If I'm using 4,000 shares, maybe I'll size down to five or 700 until I can build back up to four or seven, whatever it is, guys, you know, everybody's different. That's all perspective. But the whole point is, um, um, I bench myself when like pro athletes, that's it. Val does too. And Alex does too. Remember in the beginning, it's not about making money. It's learning the foundation and process and strategy. This is the best thing said possible. This needs to be pinned. Um, let me pin this. It's not about making money guys. I don't know why. Look, the stock market's gonna be here for the next hundred years. <laughs> the stock market will outlast the planet, for God's sakes. You know, we'll be on freaking Mars and the stock market will still be here. The point is, is why the hell do you think you can come in tomorrow in an industry that's hard and you know, trading is war, man. It's like every dollar gained is a dollar lost and vice versa. You need, I will buddy, I totally will, absolutely. Um, you need to come in and not expect money to make money tomorrow. You need to expect to learn tomorrow and then make money in time. But um, it takes time, guys. It takes time. Um, your 100 shares, you pay commission, which is your market tuition. Yes, yes, market tuition. Seriously. If you're just trading in real money for a week after paper trading and you're just breaking even, like maybe you're trading well, but you're trading so small that it's just paying the commissions, who cares, guys? You are now proving to yourself that you're trading correctly. It's not about making money. It's better to pay $1 for that trade than to lose $100 to learn each time. I could not agree more. Um, get a broker with per share, this is huge. Get a broker with per share, which is something like Cobra. You know, So with Cobra, if you use like 500 shares, guys, it's gonna cost you like a dollar. You know, TD Ameritrade is gonna cost you freaking $8 for, per round trip, so per, Entry. So if you're doing like $8 entry and then $8 exit, that's absolutely ridiculous. Cobra will cost you like $2 if that, I'm telling you. So get a broker per share. That's huge. Um, yeah, uh, TD Ameritrade mean trade, man. Only if you have to, bro. Ooh, nice. DMPI poll. Sick. One, two, <laughs> sick. Make that money. Uh, yeah, this is pure gold, man. Oh, like I couldn't agree more, man. Seriously. This is a uh, thank you, Bao, for doing all this for us today. Uh, that was the man, man. He's been here, dude, guys, he's been doing this for nearly two fucking decades. How could you not want to just pick his brain all day, go back and listen to this? I mean, this is literally from, from, from here, where is it? Where did Val start talking? From here on is 
almost in a rough draft form everything you need to know about starting out. So, you know, I'm going to save this for you guys and screenshot this. You know, this is, this is everything, guys. Val literally just laid out all the groundwork of what it takes to be a consistently profitable trader. Um, 100 shares, you know, 1,000 shares cost one, $1. Seriously, 1,000 shares cost like $1 at Cobra um, versus 8 bucks. Actually, 16 bucks. So this would be 2 and this would be like 16 um, Yeah, you can believe in account with TD easily, man. I'm telling you. Sorry to hear that. Uh, Modern Rock, Tosh, can we pay? I will, absolutely. Too many want to start banging keys and trading when they have no clue what they're doing. Why? This is gambling. We're not gamblers. When you learn to trade, it is not gambling. You are making money in high probability. See, this is the funny part. When you are um, talking to random people on the street or maybe talking to family members that don't understand, of course it's gambling, right? You're just, you're just clicking buttons on all these random plays, blah, 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 you know. This is not gambling. This is educated risk. So when you wait for confirmation all day and you wait for the death candle slams or you wait for your VWAP drops or you wait for the offerings or you wait for these specific things, these are confirmations. A high of day break, you know, low of day break, a death line short. Um, the whole point, guys, is waiting for the edge. And then once you have that edge, trading is actually really, really, really predictable. Yes, thank you, Bab. Uh, don't worry too much about PDT too much when you start out because you want to um, enter only the higher probability setup. Yes, 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 yes. It is better to make two trades for $100 than 10 trades for 20 each because here's what you're doing here. For $100 on 10 trades, or I'm sorry, 10 trades for $20 each, here's what you're doing. You are risking mental capital. And here's what happens when you get in a mental rut. You take one loss, you take another, you take maybe two more after that, you are wrecked emotionally. Then when A plus does show up that you usually nail and bail on every single day and you make good money, you are going to be scared to trade. Problem is when you make nine wins for 20 each, the one red loss you make will be 200. Yep. And this is why new traders bleed out for years. I could not agree more. You need to trade A plus setups, you can hit them a little harder than you would just a normal scalp because they are an A+. Plus. Put a risk in check, put a hard stop in place, and you're protected. Your losses need to be much smaller than your wins. That, so when people ask me, hey, Tosh, when do I know I'm a consistently profitable trader or I should go to real money or I should size up, this is your guide. Are your losses much smaller than your average or maximum wins? It's okay to lose three times twenty dollars lost, and then make one win for a hundred dollars, and you're still you're still up, you're still profitable. Key, absolutely freaking key, man. <laughs> you guys, you guys got the lucky week today. Modern rock in the house, spitting all knowledge. This is why they say size the best and forget the rest. Yes. So, and this is why we focus on, you know, you want to focus on three stocks a day, guys. Like Thou said, you want to really make a plan because all you need is one good trade a day, technically. Literally, you do that every day. So, you put your lines on three different stocks. You see the one with confirmation. You see the one that you want to play. And then maybe you only trade one of them. But guess what? It's the one that is, fits your criteria. It's your edge. It's the confirmation you needed. Boom, you nail it. And that's all you needed to do. And maybe you hit harder because it was such a predictable play that you have back tested and back tested and back tested over and over again into consistency. And then you do that for a month or two. Then you size up incrementally and very slowly into the point of not noticing. And then boom overnight, you know, well, not overnight, but it'll feel like that. You are, you went from 500 shares to 1500 over time. And you're like, dang, I'm using 1500 shares now. I was only using three or 500. Oh shoot. I'm using three or 4,000 now, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Um, hold on one sec, buddy. I'll like, I'll get to you in a sec. Hardest skills to develop, but essential. If you want to stay in the game, you must be okay with missing a trade and not trading. Avoid FOMO. So key must be okay with taking small losses before it turns into a big loss. This was one of my hardest things that I had to learn literally in a five year, um, I, hard stops changed this for me, but this was my hardest struggle is I'd have 30 days in a row, green streak, and then guess what? Day 31, boom, dead. Uh, all, all, you know, two weeks of gains just, just broken or, or a whole months of gains, man. I, I have such an ego and I still do 
that unless I put a hard stop in, man, I don't like taking losses, man. I'm one of those guys that's all about confrontation. Like, I don't back down from a fight. Like, that's just who I am. So it's very hard for me to take a loss in the market. So I learned that a long time ago, and I basically had to incorporate um, hard stops in my trading, or I was just going to let the losses balloon up because I was like, why the hell should I admit I'm wrong? Like, what? I'm not wrong. I'm smart. Like, of course I'm going to nail this. What the fuck? And then, and then you, before you know it, you're willing to risk $2,000 and it's six. And you're like, wow, why didn't I just risk $700? You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, you must be robotic and systematic. Follow your process plan. Yes, be the Terminator. Uh, stay humble or else the market humbles you. Perfect stuff. <laughs> so yeah, put a hand next to every single one of these. Seriously. Create your digital notebooks like I showed you guys earlier. This is so key. Um, the best comes with experience, man. It really does. Yeah, it totally does. It, it, yeah, it's just you back test, you back test, you back test, Olek, and you see uh, what works for you, man. I'm not a long bias trader. A lot of traders are. You know, I'm a short bias trader, which a lot of traders are not. It's what you resonate with. It's what your identity is, and it's what you're comfortable with. Um, hey, Brittany, what's up? Armando, you? Um, now, in the beginning, you do not know what works for you. You have to do it. Do not be afraid to lose because your process has risk management, which has stops in place. Yes. So before you enter any trade, you need to analyze your risk, meaning you know whether you will take the loss so you know what to expect already. So key. Know what to expect already. Again, we're not winging it. We're going in each day with a plan, whether it's a loss plan or whether it's a game plan. Um, if you cannot handle a loss, it means you are trading too large. This is the Bible. That's the ball. Oh my God, I got to pin that. That's the freaking Bible. Wait. Oops, the other one. Sometimes it's hard to see which one I'm. Guys, this is so key. If you cannot handle a loss, it means you're trading too large. Something I had to learn in the past for many years. So size down and give yourself a wider range, bigger fudge factor. Josh will help you with learning how to trade the proper loss. Uh, we have a video on this. Yes, me and Joe Kelly can help you out with this. As Joe has created many templates on this, many videos, the use of Excel spreadsheets, and make sure that you guys know uh, how much you should risk as per your account size. So if your account size is $2,000 or if it's $20,000 or if it's 200 grand, there's only a certain amount you should lose. There's only a certain amount, max loss on the day. Uh, but the use of hard stops is vital, which Tosh will reiterate to you daily. Yes, hard stops changed the game for me. I'm a very emotional trader. They took out emotions. They allowed me to know exactly what I was going to risk because in the past, like I said, you know, I would get caught. I would trade. I would. I would get cocky backside, backside, backside for a month, and then oh, let's hit frontside on the day 31st, and then boom, I'm stuck in a deer in the headlights. It's ripping on me. I don't have a stop in place, and I don't know where to stop because now it's ballooned up so much. I go, do I want to take this unnecessary two thousand dollar loss? No, and then you let it go more, and then you know it could turn into whatever. You know how many times has Alex done that? How many times has Val done that? How many times have any of us done that? So hard stops are the Bible of staying safe, guys. So not only should you be back testing um, within you know whatever platform you're back testing, not only should you be back testing how to trade, you should be back testing how to protect yourself, how to set these stops. Make every mistake in back testing so that when you go to real real money, you know exactly how to place a hard stop or an OCO order or a range order or whatever it is, whatever it is, whatever works for you. Um, I use market hard stops. Oh, <laughs> at the same time, always use market hard stops because here's the thing: um, a limit stop, which is also a stop, you know, it may blow through. Like C C H M A yesterday, a teleport candle. You are not going to be triggered out. It is. It's not going to come back down sometime, and it's just going to keep ripping on you. And it's almost as if you don't have a stop in place. Literally, it's like you don't. It's like you never put a stop, guys. So make them market stops. Are you going to deal with slippage sometimes and almost all the time, at least a little bit? Yeah, but guess what? You're going to get the fuck out and you're going to protect your account. You're going to save your mental. You're going to be able to come back the next day and hammer like you should every day. Market hard stops. Don't be a sheep. Um, this is why 100 shares, for example, so you learn all this. Yes, you do not need to do 
uh, big size yet. You need to learn these. You need to make the mistakes. You need to learn how to do these. You know, you need to learn how to set a stop wrong so you know how to do it right <laughs> on back testing um, without losing your mind and most importantly your account. Um, damn, Val, thank you for all this, buddy. You are killing it today, Val. Uh, where was I? Should I forgot? Um, and get a tab. Learn together. Do all this together, man. Get someone on your level. I always use market hard stops, yes, because I want to get out limit stops. They skip over and you won't fill. Learn where to, where to pull, properly place stops. Um, if you do not, if you do, you do not want to stop out where the herd and sheep stopped out. Exactly. If you are shaken out by ten cents, move your, your size is too large. You need to size appropriate appropriately for the trade. Here's the advice I gave a member, which I think may help everyone. So I'm sharing it. Best of luck to everyone on your journey. Let's read this together. I suggest you lower your size and let the stock work longer. So if you are shaking out by 10 cents, you can reduce your size so that 10 cents won't hurt you. I think you are sized in too large. You need to be able to be down 20 cents and be okay. Remember range. This is key, guys. New traders don't know about stocks range, how much it can run, what DMPIs potentially can go up to today what you know um rlgy on low hanger these stocks have range you need to size appropriately to handle the range be it 20 cents or 30 cents line to line you need to be able to handle line to line in terms of the range so i think you are sizing too large fudge factor super key and then this is a great one which is a little blurry um but yeah, this is this is fantastic stuff, guys. Seriously, read this, go back through this, save this on your desk. Some stocks range more than others is the point. Someone asked me, and I always stop out at the top, et cetera. This was his advice. So this is advice, guys, on how to not stop out at the top. Um, let's see. Let me see if I can go through this a little bit. Um, go back and analyze your trades. Start with smaller size. If you're constantly stopping out at the top, it means that you are a part of the herd. What, so you need to size down. Consistency is the ultimate name of the game. As consistent as the RER, don't let one trade wipe out two, um, two, three, four, 356 days of gains, like whatever it is. Um, trading is all about pattern recognition, study the commonalities, and lastly, it's all about experience. It's showing up each day, it's watching the videos, it's everything. Uh, read the screenshot on properly sizing. Yep. So I think I've pretty much got that. I can go literally word for it. It's just kind of hard to read, buddy. Val, do you have another, um, do you have a, a little bit of a clearer one, buddy? This is coming out really small. But um, yeah, guys, so that's, I mean, that's, that's the key, man. I mean, Val just literally gave you the absolute Bible on this stuff. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we, I'm going to save all this information. I'm going to copy and paste it, and then uh, I'll save it on a template, and we can automate this template. Um, I know Alex can do that with Fernando, who is our guy, El Duterino, on the MIC, sec <laughs> MIC secretary. Trading is mostly mental discipline. Be patient. Let the trade setup come to you, and don't keep adding to losers. Remember, you need only a few good trades a day to make your daily pay, so be patient. If not, just one. So try it tomorrow. Be super patient. Stock to that perfect setup to set the trade. Concentrate on the entry and everything else will be much easier. M Rock rules, modern rock. I love that. Oh yes, way better Val, thank you, way better pal. So guys, check this out. Um, Henry, hey modern rock, I've been following you on Twitter account for almost two years now and just wanted to say you've been doing, you've been a big inspiration to me. I'm also struggling to become a profitable trader. I think the biggest factor is that I don't know exactly know what to look for when forming a bias on a stock. That's why I wanted to reach out to you and see if you had any advice or if you could point me in the right direction um, as to what kind of things you look for when preparing for a trade. Your entries always seem so precise and hopefully one day I can be half as good as you. Bao said, go back and analyze your trades. See what types of trades you are more consistently profitable in. Uh, eliminate those trades which you were consistently, consistently losing. Eliminate 50 to 50, um, you know, half your trades. Um, start with smaller size. You will experience that with smaller size, you can hold longer and let your game plan play out and get shaken out with the slightest move and not get shaken out with the slightest movements. If you're constantly too nervous, it means you're in too large. If you're constantly stopping out at the top, bottom, it means that the, you are a part of the herd. What you're doing, 
uh, the herd is doing. So think back what you can do, start slower, smaller size, start later, more patience to wait longer. I love this. Um, consistency is the ultimate name of the game for successful trading career. Consistency uh, starts with one day. Aim for one green day at a time, then two green days, then three, four, etc. Confidence will build, good habits will form. Five, as consistent as you may think you are, never let one trade wipe out 10, 20, 355, 356 days of gains. Percentage of wins is meaningless. I cannot harp on that enough. Percentage of wins is meaningless. If that 1% loss wipes away 90% of gains, this was my biggest hurdle in my trading career. Henry, um, I, am, I am saving all these. Modern Rock number six, trading is about pattern recognition, so study the commonalities, charts, industries, types of news, filings, et cetera, not just the price action and not just the chart. It's cumulative analysis of many factors. And lastly, it's all experience. Keep working hard, wake up early, and stay up later than everyone else. Good luck. I love that, man. I love that. This is the link in the screenshot. Val, thank you for that. <laughs> So funny, I'd say, who's got questions? But I think Val just answered every single thing and just gave us the best piece of advice on literally everything that's ever been mentioned in stock trading history. <laughs> literally, that was everything in stock trading history. Um, oh, like float is very important for me. Um, top three, the most important things. Market cap, a little less important, but I pay attention and I like 100 million under. Um, do you take long setups often? 100% uh, short bias for myself. Uh, FX Edge, can we talk about RLGY low hanging fruit? This one breached previous day's close. Red to green test was waiting for next resistance. Usually we go to previous high a day. Um, 1.5 Joe's video, but this is too high. Is there a way of looking for the next resistance? So here's the thing when it comes to RLGY or any day two for that matter, FX Edge is what I'm doing is I am looking for the previous tops, the previous consolidation points with a ton of volume or, and or the red to green. So if you are just hitting at the red to green line and giving yourself two or three cents, you're gonna stop out a lot. RLGY went through the red to green, but guess what it did? It lined up with the previous topping at, uh, what was that? It was um, about 30 scale area. That's where it failed day one heavily in the morning pre-market. A lot of volume got drowned out right there and it came back down. So you want to give yourself a fudge factor and a little bit more room. Maybe you're sized in too large like Val was saying. Um, never used a market hard stop slippage. Yes, yes. You're going to get slippage on these things every now and then, but I'm telling you right now, man, they're going to trigger and they're going to keep you safe, Oleg. Um, yeah. Yeah, limit stops. No, 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 no. Ooh, this is the best stops. This is why you need a hard stop, guys. This was me. This was literally me. Sometimes holding on does more damage than letting go. Just put a freaking hard stop, man. Take the rope off your hand. Don't hold on to this shit when you don't have to. <laughs> Tag team with T Bradley 90 and Modern Rock today. I love it, man. This was fun as hell. <laughs> I hope you guys got a lot of information out of this. This is totally recorded. We're going to save every little bit of this, and it'll be for replay. We're going to copy. Um, I'll screenshot all this. We'll copy and paste it for you guys. We're going to keep all of this, but this is just absolute gold. Thank you, Bao, for doing this today. Um, seriously, big thank you to Modern Rock for everybody to learn. Yes, yes, we will do, buddy. Absolutely, no problem. Brittany, yeah. Guys, thank you so much for this. This was this is literally my weekly pleasure every week, man. I love doing this with you guys. Bow, absolute fantastic job, guys. We're gonna make sure you get all this information. We're gonna automate this. I, I swear, I'm gonna create a template or a PDF or something. Um, and we'll I'll, I'll I'll take screenshots of everything. We'll save it as a PDF, and we're gonna automate this. So we'll put it in. Um, we'll just we'll just automate it every day, so you guys can see this. We'll have Alex do this tonight. This is absolutely extraordinary information. Um, so guys, go back, reread this um, three, four, five times over if you have to. Maybe read it once a week. Seriously, read it once a week. All right, guys, you've been, you guys have been great. My PMs, I'm getting a lot of PMs. My PMs are always open. And here, if you guys need anything, welcome to MIC 
and I am more than happy to answer any of your PMs, guys, emails, concerns, suggestions. We're here for you guys. I do this every week. We'll do another. I don't know how we're ever going to top a Q&A like this, but uh, we'll try to do some cool stuff next week again, guys. Uh, my total pleasure. Thank you so much again for Bow. Thank you for everyone who showed up. Welcome to MIC, and um, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Have a great night. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.